All right, the brachial artery, one of the core channels for arterial blood to the upper limb. We're going to start off this video by going back to where we started at the heart, looking at the departure point for arterial blood, which is the left ventricle into the ascending aorta, which shortly becomes the arch of the aorta. And to the right, we have departing the brachiocephalic trunk, which very quickly becomes the subclavian artery. At the lateral border of the first rib, that becomes known as the axillary artery, which continues into the axilla, anterior to the teres major muscle, and as it transmits past the teres major, it becomes known as the brachial artery. The brachial continues down the medial aspect of the upper arm, medial to the biceps brachii muscle, adhering quite closely to the distal end of the humerus before terminating by bifurcation into the ulna and radial arteries in the cubital fossa of the elbow. If we go back to the start here, we'll see the first branch of the brachial artery, which is the deep brachial artery, known in your older anatomy text as profunda brachii, and that's how I was taught it. Profunda brachii, or the deep brachial artery, continues around posteriorly, descending briefly in this uh, part of the humerus called the spiral groove where it's accompanied by the radial nerve. It also terminates by bifurcation into, into the radial recurrent artery and another, and another one that's not actually present on this model, that's the middle collateral artery. The next significant branch which we'll discuss is the nutrient artery, which departs just around the, 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 the point of insertion of the coracobrachialis muscle, which is basically around the midpoint of the upper arm. It departs and is transmitted into the substance of the humerus through a nutrient foramen. There are actually a number of these nutrient foramina throughout the humerus and throughout any bone that allow passage of arterial uh, blood supply. So you may hear about the nutrient artery of the humerus, nutrient artery which departs from the brachial, but in other texts you'll hear about the nutrient branches. Uh, and this sort of makes more sense intuitively because there are actually a number of branches departing from the brachial which feed into um, the humerus like that. Then further down, we have the superior ulnar collateral artery just here. Let me come around to the back to give you a slightly better view of that. So there's the superior ulnar collateral artery. And next we have the inferior ulnar collateral. These both contribute to the elbow joint itself and are said to form part of the arterial anastomosis of the elbow. So we have the superior ulnar collateral and the inferior ulnar collateral, both of which essentially form anastomoses with the terminal branches of uh, the brachial artery. See the superior ulnar collateral coming down the back here and then eventually terminating around the substance of the radial artery and the inferior ulnar collateral uh, feeds directly into the ulnar artery. So I said before, it, 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 the superior ulnar collateral anastomosis with the radial, that's not exactly correct. It, it terminates about a centimeter or so away from it. So we've got these four major branches and there are two others that get mentioned in the uh, in some anatomical texts. So we have the middle ulnar collateral and the deltoid artery. But when you have a look around, the majority of texts don't even mention these at all. And I think it'd be pretty unfair if you got examined on them. So we're not, we're not going to mention them at all at this stage. Which helps with the mnemonic because it's only four branches that we need to think about. The profunda brachii, the nutrient branches, the superior ulnar collateral and the inferior ulnar collateral forming the mnemonic penis. Um, Let's just uh, move on. I'm sure that one will stick with you to some degree. Let's talk about the anatomical relations of the brachial artery next. We're going to come back to the center of our model and introduce all of those now. I mentioned pretty early on in the piece, one of the main relations of the artery is the biceps brachii. You can see it's very prominent on the anterior aspect of the upper arm, as we all know. Let's make that transparent now so that we can map out the path of the brachial artery, medial two and uh, posterior to that muscle. As with many of the arteries of the upper limb, the brachial artery moves 
essentially in congruence with the with a vein. In this case, it's the basilic vein. And you'll see tightly adhered to the brachial artery is the median nerve. Let's move around the back. We can see the triceps brachii muscle, which has three heads, two adhering to the humerus, anterior middle, and then this posterior head, which adheres to the scapula. And the deep brachial artery is transmitted through, um, through the space between these two heads here. It curves around the lateral aspect of the brachialis muscle here before terminating by bifurcation in two. Can you remember? That's the radial collateral artery and the middle collateral artery. Pretty hard. A lot of collaterals, a lot of recurrence, a lot of ulnars. It's pretty confusing stuff. But if you remember that mnemonic, then you should be good as gold. We talked briefly about the coracobrachialis muscle. That's it just there. The coracoid process of the scapula and its insertion point just here. We have the teres major muscle there again, the inferior border of which marks the beginning of the brachial artery. And we can see the substance of the elbow joint ligaments, bursi and articular cartilage, all supplied by this arterial anastomosis of the elbow which the inferior ulnar collateral and superior ulnar collateral contribute to quite heavily. Right, that's just about it. Before we wrap up, let's just go over some of the interesting anatomical variants for the brachial artery. It is in fact duplicated for all or maybe just part of its course in about a fifth of the, of the population. And in a smaller proportion, you'll see what we call a high division of the brachial artery, which is where it it uh, terminates to, to form the ulnar and radial arteries in the upper arm rather than the forearm. We'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.